<laughs> oh, come on, <laughs> let's do it now. I think I'm gonna enjoy this one a lot because I enjoyed the phone a lot, so... Hi guys, and welcome to my full review of the Samsung Galaxy A5 2016. Samsung's latest premium mid-ranger and maybe the best possible chance to get as close to a Samsung Galaxy S7 experience for just half of the price. Where it falls short and where it's maybe even superior to its bigger brother, we'll find out in my full review. So let's jump right in and start off with the design and build quality. Actually, let's compare it with its bigger brother. As you can see, it is a little bit taller. It is by about two millimeters wider but it also has the bigger screen of 5.2 inches instead of 5.1 inches, therefore it's also a little bit thinner. What I would have wished for is the power button to be a little bit lower, because on the S7 it's pretty much perfect, but they did a quite nice job here. Let's compare it with the A3, and what we can see here, it's noticeably bigger, but of course there's 0.5 inches of display difference. So. Let's check the device itself. We have glass on the back and glass on the front and it feels absolutely perfectly smooth, which is something I love. You just have to like or maybe hate glass on glass, but I absolutely like it. I think it's grippy at all times for me. This of course could vary. What I like a lot is that they use 2.5D curved glass on the back as well as on the front and this is why the device feels so nice and smooth and rounded and because the coating here on the front is so nice and smooth, this feels absolutely great. Here we have the flash, the camera, on the top we have my microphone, volume rocker, the buttons, sound maybe a little bit cheaper compared to its bigger brother, where they sound a little bit more, let's say, subtle but it works out nice the position is something that i don't like because if i hold it like this this is an inconvenient position for me but that's always a personal preference on the bottom we have the headphone jack and the micro usb along with the speaker and another microphone i already talked about the power button i like it it's in a still okay position and it clicks quite nice here we have the sim card and sd card tray all the sensors on the front there is no notification led though the home button is what sounds also a little bit cheaper if you can hear this compared to this more subtle sound. But the fingerprint reader itself works quite okay. It's not quite as fast as on the S7, but it works out quite okay. One thing that I don't like so much is that you have to press, go to the home screen and then it will unlock. I would wish for this to be an instant thing, but actually, as you can just see, if we turn it on, this works quite okay. So absolutely no problems here. They did a really brilliant job here. I like the beveled edges. Everything feels nicely done because there is no champ for the edge that could actually break because this is still covered as well in this texture thing. So it really looks nice in my opinion. Something that I thought would have been better is the actual curve here because I thought on the S7 it's a little bit too much, but this actually snuggles in better in my hand. But this overall feels absolutely great. Comparing, for example, with the Sony Xperia Z3, you can see it is a little bit actually narrow and they did a really great job making this 5.2 inch as compact as possible. So one hand use was quite nicely done, no problems here at all. A little bit of a stretch sometimes getting to the notification jet, but the rest has been done great. So final verdict, absolutely perfect job for a premium mid-ranger, absolutely fantastic. Now about the screen, Super AMOLED 1080p and yeah, absolutely nice. 5.2 inches, really, really sharp. And I actually did a side-by-side -side comparison with the S7 and what was quite odd for me to see that pictures, especially in very minor details, actually gave a little bit more details and seemed a little bit sharper, which is definitely very surprising for me. The white point, absolutely nice. Usually I always complain it being a bit too warm, but this time it's absolutely great for me. I like it a lot. Of course, the black is perfect. What else should it be? Contrast ratios on a Super AMOLED are great. And I think they did a quite great job this time with the color calibration by the gods. It is a little bit vibrant. It is a little bit punchy, but not as oversaturated as it was back then in a few years ago, maybe. And we still have different color profiles. I used adaptive because I like that one the most. The one thing about the viewing angles, if you can maybe see here, we have a color shift on certain diagonals. But this is nothing you really see up front. This is absolutely okay. But if you tilt it to the side, it gets a little bit greenish, which is absolutely a problem for me. And this display could have easily been as on the S7 as a flagship display. And I would have had no issue with it because it's absolutely great verdict. Pretty much the very, very best premium mid-range display you can get. Now let's check the sound here.
One thing that you can maybe already see if I hold it for this like an example for gaming then I did hit the volume rockers quite often by accident. This is something you will have to get used to but that's just what it is. In terms of the speaker position I'm actually totally fine because if I use it like this in my right hand I never blocked it because it can actually reflect and the same goes for landscape because if I use it like this or for gaming it usually fires through my fingers so I didn't really have any issues with that. About the maximum volume it could have been a little bit higher, a little bit more headroom would have been nice but it mostly gets the job done. I didn't really have a complaint about the maximum volume. Sound is maybe a little bit more flat. It could have been a little bit richer but therefore we still have a nice mid balance and the highs are very clear without ever distorting. So the sound overall gets my full approval. No problems at all. I really like it. So let's just go into and check the performance. And the performance is pretty much the only thing where you pretty much see that this is just a mid ranger because as you can see the scrolling here in the browser it is very smooth and it's very consistent without almost any stutters or lag but it's also not really super battery smooth. I've seen even lower end devices that can perform better if you for example see here this is an older weapon. It is absolutely nice. The experience is absolutely flawless, but it could have sometimes been a little bit smoother. Same goes for example for Phoenix. You just always see that it's just not super smooth. There are some micro lags here and there, but it's definitely not bad enough to actually break the experience for me because I still like the overall performance good enough. It was fine. It would have not been the right thing if I wanted a flagship because especially here in Google Plus, you see a lot of hangs, you see a lot of stutters and also for Palabra. But if you just want a performing, nice performing device that does a good job, this one still is it. The, the main big complaint I have though is the multitasking because we have two gigabytes of RAM and as you can see here, it kills apps way too quickly. So if you didn't like it on the Samsung Galaxy X6, you will be even more disappointed here because with just two gigabytes of RAM, you see so much app killing, which is actually really, really disappointing. It's not enough to break the experience because the app loading times are still okay, definitely not as fast as on a flagship. And that's pretty much the only thing you will notice that it's just not that great. So overall, what I mean and what I say is you definitely notice in the performance part that this is a medium mid-range device because it's not as super smooth as a flagship. It's not as capable in terms of RAM management and the gaming performance same because we don't have the highest frame rates but the good thing is the frame rates are quite consistent they don't really drop too much and you don't have any slowdowns so this is still totally fine and i know there are a lot of flack about this device in different reviews i saw that the performance just isn't up on power on this device because last year it used 720p now it uses 1080p and maybe the cpu or the soc in general wasn't quite up to snuff getting this device powered but I still think the overall qualities make totally up for this device. And as you can see here, gaming is absolutely fine. So I don't have a problem with this at all. Totally fine for me in my book. It's not the very best performance, but still not bad enough to break anything in terms of performance. About the battery life. Charging, 1 hour and 35, if I remember, remember correctly. If not, I will display it on the side which is absolutely fine, quick charge 2.0, did a good job, let's test the battery life. And this is something where I have to give a little bit of a disclaimer because this is the first time that GSAM, my reliable battery stat, did actually fool me because the first run I had, one day and 20 hours gave me nine hours and I was absolutely psyched about this. I thought this is the best battery life I've ever seen with the next run being at 50% and five hours being absolutely amazing. And then I had eight hours over the course of one and a half days with heavier use with mobile data. But then I noticed one thing, the app just doesn't properly read out the values. So it adds at least about one hour for a full charge. And what is more realistic is about six, six and a half hours, as you can see here. So keep that in mind. I was fooled a little bit on Wi-Fi. I still think over the course of one day, you can even get seven hours. And over the course of two days, six hours should still be possible because I got that. But I was a little bit food, so it's not nine hours as I posted on Twitter. But the battery life is still one of the best that I've used in the recent past and pretty much in general. So absolutely great job here. Now, in terms of performance, yes, it is TouchWiz and a lot of people don't like it, even though Samsung doesn't even call it TouchWiz anymore. Here is the stock launcher. I'm using a different theme, as you can already see here as well. This is the black edition, I think, M U M Y or me UI and I don't have a problem because like this it actually looks very minimalistic and elegant so I definitely don't have an issue with the UI design anymore about the features I can't complain either because what we have is really nice we have the fingerprint reader we have themes which is really really nice you and you have motion gestures 
all the good stuff you pretty much know that and i will go in a little bit more in depth when i do my samsung galaxy s7 software review which uses marshmallow this is still on 5.1.1 but I totally don't have an issue with that. It did all I wanted to. I could customize my quick settings and this was all finally done. So I could complain about the software, but I definitely won't because I don't see why. Many will say, yes, it's, it's a RAM management talk. And yeah, it does definitely impact the performance in terms of RAM. But in terms of design, I don't see the issue. If you use the proper theme, you get all the nice settings. And actually this one doesn't have too much of anything worse. So I really like it. There is bloat, but you can get at least disabled some most of the things so that is all i have to say i still like the software a lot and i think it touch with is better than ever even more so on the samsung galaxy s7 and if the a5 2016 gets marshmallow it should get even better so absolutely fine from my standpoint now about the camera selfies are absolutely brilliant they are very sharp i really like the great exposure and the really natural colors so they did a really nice job here when we go into low light i see a slightly slower focus with a short pump when it actually tries to focus and the picture is slightly more grainy than i usually see but therefore still very sharp and it takes up a lot of light so i'm totally fine with the low light capabilities if you go into the normal shots i notice that if i go very up close to macros and then it has a little bit of trying an issue with focusing it just can't focus if you are too close to the object which is a little bit odd and something i usually don't see therefore the pictures are very sharp and the focus is actually actually in daylight really really fast great exposure good accurate color reproduction nice pro no problems here and a really nice bokeh effect so in terms of picture quality this device does a really 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 great job way above the mid-range spectrum for videos nice and smooth with a nice smooth exposure transition really nicely done a little bit of a slow but constant and smooth focus with a nice gradual focus effect something i definitely didn't see before on any device so far so it's a quite nice effect videos are sometimes slightly grainy and there's a minimal artifact showing up during fast motion but all in all i gotta say this device camera is well above the mid-range and easily on a flagship level that's all i got to say about that now let's go to the deal breakers and deal makers design and build quality definitely one of the main highlighted deal makers definitely no deal breaker because very compact and it just feels so substantial so premium and so well made in the hand that you wouldn't believe this is just a mid-range device same goes for the display this display is absolutely extraordinarily well done and it could easily be still a flagship level even in 2016 because of the resolution side by side you don't notice any difference compared to the s7 it's really really well done about the sound the speaker maybe is one of the lower parts but still way more than good enough because loud enough with good tonal balance maybe not super rich but totally fine in my book so also no deal breaker the performance for some people could be the deal breaker if you are looking out for the best performer because there are even some lower end devices with for example the snapdragon 410 that perform a little bit smoother this one is still very fast and very capable but there are some general stutters and lags and the overall smoothness and frame rate of this device just doesn't seem as high as the overall rest of the qualities but still no deal breaker for me but if you are really high into performance it could be but then you shouldn't watch out for a mid-ranger i think battery life is absolutely the one deal maker here because easily six hours plus screen on time with a very high brightness i used about 50 percent which was super bright on this device and with the great contrast of this display it makes up for a lot of things and i actually for a long time was thinking about should i just get the a5 and not the a7 because uh, the s7 because the battery life is just so much better still but that's definitely the deal maker the cameras should also very much be a deal maker because also a flagship camera already in a mid-range device it's not on an sm s7 level but the pictures when i compared them were actually really really impressive so this brings me to my verdict how close do you get to a flagship experience and i would say if it's just except of the performance you get at least easily 80 percent of that because everything is so close but you just pay about at least here in germany it's about 340 euros a very close experience and i really thought i could save a lot of money just getting this one over the s7 but if you want everything just to be a little bit better the display be ever so slightly better in terms of contrast maybe the feel in hand is still noticeable better on the s7 i will go into that in my s7 review the sound is a little bit rich uh, the performance is definitely a lot better the battery life is even worse and the camera is ever so slightly better especially faster so you see 
it makes a great job. It holds up really well and it does everything so well. So it definitely gets my full recommendation because I enjoyed this device a lot and I would have really wished to have this device longer to get it a little bit more in-depth experience, but I have to review the A3 as well, which seems to be a slightly toned down version of the A5. But despite the slightly lower performance, this device does everything already on a flagship level and this is pretty much the best premium mid-ranger that i know of so far because i don't see anything that is so high-end with this price tag so that is my full review if you liked it give me a thumbs up if you didn't then don't if you want to see more content like this and reviews subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions or comments leave them down below so i wish you a nice day until next time bye